Welcome to Sportscraft. Today we're talking about uh, NBA 2K17 and how to set up high school leagues and create draft classes. We're going to get through the easy one first uh, because everybody's been asking me about this and seeing my My GM series or my My League series, I should say, is wait, so how exactly are you getting those guys onto high school teams and having them play games? Okay, there, there's a long answer to this. Um, and actually, there's not just one answer. So, for instance, if you look at uh, the infamous NY and how he sets up his college series, essentially what he did is that he went to the roster creator, edited all the players, including the NBA players, to like make them like 60 years of age or whatever. But he essentially created and edited all the um, NCAA guys made them the way that they should have been uh assigned rosters in a certain way so that like certain nba players are like really really hidden and if they did have to be assigned to a team they're absolutely buried in those rosters um and went ahead and just created every player and there you go that's how we got ncaa 2k 17 in quotation marks uh you could essentially do the same thing for high school if you wanted to I didn't do that because that is way too much time that I do not have. Um, I can't do that because if I'm, a, you know, if I'm going to sit here and create videos every day, there's no way I could sit here and create. Uh, I mean, like not even 12 rosters, which is all I have right now is 12 high schools, uh, and never mind like 32 or, or 40. I mean, what, what's NCAA at? Like 44 now. I would ideally like to have about 36 high school rosters, rosters, but there's no way I would be able to create that from scratch. So here's the way that I've done it. Now, I've actually set up two separate leagues, and then uh, one is where it's just high school, and then one where it's high school and international teams, so that I can get uh, my international players in there, like Marcel Dupree and uh, Omer Cohen. Uh, Omer Cohen. Um, so here's what I do. You go into the league, you set it up, um, you go to um, uh, you know create new league where it's like customize all of them, and then you go to uh, the conferences. The Western Conference is what I use to set up my high school teams, and the Eastern Conference is what I use to set up my international team. So you get 16 international, 16 high school. The internationals are easy because the roster's already set up there. And then for the uh, high schools, what you'll have to do is I personally picked historical teams. So I went ahead and I did the historical teams, uh, went in there, plugged in uh, whichever ones I could. And then once I did that, you go into your season, you go to um, expansion team, and then down there there should be, a, or relocation I believe is what it is, and then you go down there to where it says uh, download or upload a team design, and then you go and control whatever team you're looking to replace and download the team design to that team. That will assign your high school team. Then once you've done that, what I did was that I went ahead and I fast forwarded about 16 years. So you have to go ahead and simulate through 16 years of basketball in order to finally kind of wipe out all the NBA players and whatever and make sure that they're not there anymore and that you have a nice, clean roster for your high school teams. Um, then once you've done that, you can go ahead and mix around whatever players you want to like make the team have a certain feel. You can edit players. You can actually edit their heights and everything in there. So um, if you want like all your high school guys to be like, oh, you know, like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, except for this one star player who's like 6'8", or something like that, you can actually do that and edit the rosters down and make it that way. Um, and then once you've done and you've like simulated all the way to, I think for mine, it's like all the way to 2033. You then go ahead and then you upload the draft class that you want um, your players to be represented in high school and internationally. Uh, once you've done that, you go ahead and you head into the NBA draft. And then once you head into the NBA draft, what you're going to do is you're going to move your picks around so that you can manipulate the roster and draft the player to the team that he should be on. So you'll see it here, for instance, for... Uh, uh, for Sacred Heart Prep, I went ahead and I traded the first three picks so that they can go ahead and get uh, Daryl Jefferson, Derek Patterson, and Hakeem Rogier because that's where they should be. And then you do the same thing for each team and so forth. And then once you do that, bam, there you go. You have your high school roster team. Just go ahead and edit the numbers to make sure that the numbers uh, uh, match up to high school um, uh, standards. So it should be um, any number that's 1 through 5, uh, 11 through 15, or 10 through 15, 
um, 20 through 5, anything that ends in a 5 all the way up to uh, numbers that begin with 5, and then 0 and double zero, or what I believe is what's natural for high school, as well as college. International, I don't think applies, uh, th those rules apply or anything like that, you can just make them whatever number you want. So then once you have all that set up, you can go ahead and uh, just play through the season. Uh, whatever games that you feel like you need to feature for your series, you can just go ahead and just say, okay, the high school games I'll play, and then whenever the international teams play each other, I'll play those and showcase them, because that's pretty much what I do uh, to get it all set up. So that's setting up the high school league or setting up whatever league you want. Um, that, that should pretty much explain it. I, I don't think it's any more complicated than that. Um, and now let's go ahead and jump into creating draft class because that's where that's where the fun really begins and where you kind of get uh, your personalities and I, th I think everybody's been really asking for this one because they've seen the draft class that I've created and how fleshed out it is and how many different um, players and styles and um, looks that there are for everybody uh, essentially what motivated me to do this is that when I looked at, like, you, you know how you play the world in the USA game, and you go and you look, and, like, the world team is, like, this weird amalgamation of just, like, a bland, like, tannish color. Like, everybody's, like, a tan color. They have the weirdest, like, hairstyles. Like, some dudes are just, like, they don't look like they should have cornrows, but they do. Um, everybody just looks, like, really weird, and nothing, like, stands out about them. Their, their gear and their accessories look random. Uh, and then you look over at Team USA and it's just like the same thing, but just everybody's black and there's no diversity or, or, or anything like that whatsoever. So that's what really motivated me to go and create a draft class myself for uh, for future classes. And, and you can see here for NBA 2K17, uh, the 2018 class that I, I created, my fictional class, look at Team USA. Way more diverse. Um, way more different talent, and even the overalls. You know, the the overalls are like heavily in favor for USA in a generated, a randomly generated class. Whereas in my draft class, it's a lot closer, and it entices you to maybe kind of want to look in and see, okay, well, what's going on with the international scene? Who should I be looking out for out there? Um, that's what I wanted to do. And you can see, like, you can look at the benches, and then you can look at the players on the floor. Just it's it's day and night. Uh, the difference uh, when you look at the diversity and when you go ahead and you create a draft class and you can edit everybody um, and how much cleaner and much uniform people look rather than the random draft class where it's just like you know they just kind of hit random on a generator and just like let it rip so how do we actually create something like this so you're gonna go ahead and you're going gonna go into um, your options at the, uh, the the basically the main menu for 2k um, and go into uh, create a draft class and once you have that opened up you can actually see I've been working on this one in particular because I'm loading it up uh, yes Joey Claxton is going to be the number one uh, guy for the next year uh, for the next year's class so yes I am working on 2019 as well um, we're gonna go ahead and just pick a random guy here and uh, edit him around so I actually want to uh, I want to mess with a small forward here uh, what I did was I decided that I wanted this guy's name to be um, uh, Sharif Saunders. I, I thought it was like a really cool sounding name. It's a double S. S, -S is like a ship. Uh, it's a, like a boat. So, you know, like, you know, like the SS and Pokemon or whatever. Well, I want to make him like SS3 because he's the captain of the boat that shoots a bunch of threes. So I'm making him a perimeter shooter, whatever. You create whatever you want. And I'll go, I'll, I'll actually have another Sportscraft video where I go more in detail about like character creation, basically dealing with the, the five W's, which is like who, what, when, where, why, and then how um, of the characters. Like for instance, with um, Ricky Shays, I just, I wanted a guy whose name was Rick because I thought like Rick was a cool name and like Slick Rick would be a nice nickname for somebody. Um, and that was like, all right, you know, like Slick Rick, Pretty Ricky, or like all different sorts of names I could give this guy. And Ricky Shays, I, like I was looking through the last names and Shays was just so clean. It was a name that the like game could say. And that's how I ended up creating him. And I was like, all right, he's got to have like a rock star look. Like he's got to look really cool. Um, and that's how I came up with him. But we'll go more into detail about that in a different video. Um, so for this particular draft class that I'm working on, I haven't really decided what I want the overall draft class to look like um but i'm going a little weaker than the 2018 draft that i created 
Um, and how you want to create that draft cla class is completely up to you. If you want a draft class where it's just mainly all role players and it's kind of just like a guess of who you want in there, there you go. You can make a draft class that's completely depleted of centers where you can't find too many of them and heavy on guards. You can do whatever you want. What, however you want to shape this draft class is completely up to you. And I'm going to give you kind of the steps into guiding you in the right direction of doing that. Um, while we're still here in the vitals uh, for Sharif here, um, the one thing you want to pay attention to in vitals is peak. So there's a peak start and peak end. Essentially what peak start and peak end does is kind of determine the longevity of your player and how effective they'll be and how long they'll be effective. Um, so when you're talking about peak start, the peak start, I'm going to put at 26 and the peak end, I'm going to put at 31. So he is so once he hits the age of 26, he officially peaks and, and that's where his overall should be the highest. And then it'll slowly start to trickle down as he gets older. So his peak end will be at 31 and it'll just be a small gradual progression after 31 years old he then drops off and starts dropping off completely that's when he starts thinking going into like okay maybe it's time to retire i, I can't get on certain teams my overall is like really starting to plummet um that's something you want to manipulate a lot in your draft class because you want to have that that bust factor in there and i think that the generated draft classes really miss that because they just typically just generate guys and like oh the peak start 28 mm, peak end 34 and i'm like well i mean that means then that means everybody's gonna be in the league for probably around 10 to 14 years everybody shouldn't be like that there should be some guys who even if they're like a superstar caliber player end up busting early that that happens sometimes where they just don't grow past a certain point and and they end up retiring early whether it's due to injury or it's just people kind of caught on to them um there should be that diversity there so you you can have some guys for instance that even uh may peak when like they're 27 which is a young age to peak at but then their peak in doesn't happen until like they're 38 you know your guys like uh christian leitner or uh, gary payton or uh even uh, Jason Williams a little bit, who, you know, found longevity in the league, even though, um, well, I guess Jason Williams is a better example of this, where he peaked very early, but then, you know, he was still an effective player later on in his career, uh, like when he was playing with the Miami Heat. Still a good guy, still able to, to go. He's just never going to be superstar talent level again. Um, that's something you can do. You can have guys where they peak really late, uh, where they peak at like 33, and they're able to like go ahead and become the superstar and fulfill all their potential and maybe even go even higher than that if you train them um, and then don't really start to peak until that age and then peak off at uh, at 36 or something like that. That's all up to you, but that's what peak does and why you should be paying attention to that. Afterwards, you can go ahead and kind of mess around with the face. I kind of wanted to give this guy a big head for some reason and uh, put his dreads back on him. I wanted him a little darker. Um, I, I had a friend back home, his name was Sharif, and you know, black guy, dreads, a little tuft on his hair. So I was like, all right, let's 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 roll with that. Um, so yeah, once you once you're done kind of figuring that out, you want to head into the body frame and kind of figure out where to go, where to go from there. Uh, I made Sharif a small forward, um, and actually, at back in the vitals, you can kind of choose play calls or whatever. I made him a three point guy, mid range shooter, and also um, a cutter. Because um, that's the sort of player that I'm trying to build here is a perimeter guy who can occasionally uh, occasionally likes to go like backdoor or make cuts to get himself to the basket. So he's very good off the ball um, and, and very active. Um, so body type wise, I, I also made him kind of like a, a, a mid-major guy. So he goes to the San Diego State. So I, I decided, you know, let's keep him around like six, seven. Uh, you want to watch your wingspan. Uh, body length, I still haven't really figured out if that really affects anything. Wingspan definitely does. Uh, if your guy has a lo long wingspan, he's usually going to make more defensive plays. Um, be easier for him to like evade shot blockers um, and, and get over guys with a with a long wingspan. You, you guys should know this. Um, body length, I still haven't kind of figured that out. Shoulder width, I still haven't really figured out if that affects too much I'm, a, I'm guessing it's mostly like wingspan that that's affecting and how big they are but um 
there's really no like body type in this game like you know Kevin Durant is like really skinny and somebody like Jared Sullinger isn't but um, when you create people you don't really get that body definition um, even when you say like okay this guy's supposed to be like 195 and this other guy's supposed to be 240 uh, body length I've seen kind of makes them look a little slimmer or a little um, fatter kind of not like really not, not even fatter they're just I guess like a little they look like they have a little bit more weight on them depending on how high or low you get them but that's all up to you um, if you want the look portion of it so that's what you want to focus on with body then you want to focus on the shoes the gear and the accessories um, because they come out really goofy looking in NBA 2k17 they look awful they're always like really dis like just not well put together whatsoever I mean you can even look here with how Sharif started and it's like what what is that I, I don't know what that is on his leg um, so you want to go ahead and clean that up make it look nice and um, like like he actually tried to dress himself today um, and do whatever you want there usually what I'll do is that I'll have the shoe match whatever college I want them to go to so San Diego State I believe is sponsored by Nike so I'm gonna have them wear some Nikes the Kobe's work just fine for me I think they're a good-looking shoe keep them on them. then where I go next is that I go to signatures because I want to kind of get a feel for how I want him to play on the court how I want him to look and again it's going to be a random plethora once you get inside of here because, because the generator just kind of makes them do whatever like here he had like Larry Bird's shooting stance and I'm like no 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 that looks awful he shouldn't have a set shot look so uh, I, went, I, went, I went ahead and fixed his jumper a little bit um, he's not going to be like a guy who's like and one mixtape tour and you know trying to cross up dudes so going to give him a more subtle normal looking um dribbling set uh he's not a strong post guy so i'm gonna make sure that his post set makes a little bit more sense um he's not a guy who's gonna you know like he can obviously dunk at six seven and and with the length that he has but he's not gonna be a guy you know like going all crazy at the rim so you kind of tone that down a little bit i want him to lay up a little uh not weekly but like more like a guard so i gave him ty lawson's layup set and then there we go we already have our player in motion he's kind of fitting uh, a little bit of the theme that I want him to have is a perimeter guy um, who can also get to the basket um, and he's not he doesn't seem to you know over the top he needs to fit whatever you're going for so now that we have that set up uh, the next thing you want to do at least in my opinion is that you want to set up hot zones hot zones are important because if you're making a perimeter guy you want to determine what sort of perimeter guy is he does he like to shoot at the corners then he's going to be a uh, a corner specialist um and that's a badge that you can get him, give him later on too so what i did was i kind of said okay he's hot in the corners um hot at the top of the uh sorry the right um center of the arc and then he's a little colder as he shoots from his left side but a little warmer when he shoots on his right um so as he gets closer to the basket um, you start to see that he's uh, a little colder when he's on the outside though that's his bread and butter and we're gonna make his uh, overall uh, resemble that as well so we're gonna go to attributes next once you get inside of your attributes you want to go ahead and start to kind of sculpt them out now attributes is not the most important thing it isn't um, what's actually most important is tendencies and some people like to do tendencies first before they jump into attributes me i like to make sure that i'm grounded inside the attribute portion first because if i know that he's going to be a perimeter three-point shooter i should have his attributes set in place first to make sure that they make sense before i even like talk about where his tendencies are that's why we did hot zones verse so that i know okay if he likes to shoot at the corners guess where his tendencies are going to be high at the corners so once you've gone ahead and you've uh, assembled your attributes for me it's going to be like uh, high three-point shooting if he's contested you have a better chance of, uh, of stopping him if you can test his shot uh, He can create a little bit off dribble. There are some guys that I make better off dribble shoot the shooters than open shooters Because uh, some guys can create themselves open and shoot better when they do that um, in this case I'm uh, not for him. He's more of a catch-and-shoot kind of guy um, And then I'm gonna make his speed a little average not too good on defense, but not too bad. He's all right um, he's not like an athletic freak or anything like that either. Maybe some high stamina. And you know what? I, I gave him an arm sleeve on uh, on his left uh, on his left elbow. So maybe there, we can make a little bit of story there. Maybe he's like Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson wore a sleeve because he had tendonitis in his elbow. So 
sure, let's say he has tendonitis and fix the injury rating so that it's actually his left elbow that has a higher chance of getting re-injured. You can do that. You can kind of target what points in the body you want to go ahead and um, and focus on if you want to make it a weakness. So, you know, for, for instance, if you're creating Harry Giles, I would make his weakness his knee. I would make that thing weak as hell considering how many uh, injuries he's gone through throughout his entire, um, I guess, life playing basketball. All right, so once you have all of that set up, uh, you want to actually make your way down to the uh, potential and the intangibles. Um, you can also go back a bit and focus on, like, you know, uh, how he reacts to the ball and defense and all that stuff. But I, I think this is more important than anything else is potential and intangibles. Um, I focus way more on potential here. So when you turn potential as far down as you can, that's actually going to tell you what the current overall of the player is. So the overall um, here so far is 70. Now, Sharif isn't a guy that I, I think has like intangibles. He's he, he is what you get. He's a three-point shooter who is not that great on defense. He's okay, and that's really where he should be. So I'm going to go ahead and actually turn his intangibles down to like 55-ish. And then go ahead, and now you can see when I push down the potential, his potential goes down to 68. So now that means that his overall right now is a 68. What I'm going to do is I'm now going to turn up his potential to like the mid-70s. What that means is that now, when you draft Sharif and you try to work on him, you can go ahead and build him up as much as you can. You can even get to a certain point before his peak ends, uh, before his peak even starts. Once he hits 77 overall, that means that he does not grow any further than that. Now, I do know that there is a, a certain camp that you can send guys to to increase their potential, and if you want to do that, you can. But if you don't, he peaks at 77, and that's it. He doesn't go any further than that. Those are the sort of things that you want to look out for when you're creating guys because you don't want everybody's potential to be up at 92, 93, because then you're going to end up with a draft class of a bunch of 92 guys. So be sure you're limiting potential as much as you can to say, all right, this is the cutoff point. This is as far as he goes, because you're going to want some guys who are just role players. You're going to want some guys who are just bust. You want some guys where, um, and this can happen too. This is actually a smart thing to do. You can set their potential high, and this can trick people as well. You set their potential really high so that it seems like, oh, I'm getting an A plus potential guy, but then their peak starts really early. So it doesn't matter how high their potential may be, they may never even get close to it or even hit it if their peak is really low. Um, and sometimes that's what I do. I use um, potential, the peak, their height, their wingspan to really kind of throw people off and kind of have them figure out, all right, what is this guy actually good at and what should I be focusing on? Um, because I think when you do that, you make it rewards people for scouting and actually going in and looking what a player is and seeing all the different rankings that like, oh, it, I mean, it throws NBA.com, 2K and Draft Express on, on a loop. I remember there was one draft in particular they had, um, I'm, I'm not saying who, um, but in my other um, draft class, they essentially had a guy who was drafted, uh, drafted, he was drafted 12th in one draft and NBA.com was like really high on him, but Draft Express was like, ah, I don't really know. He's like a, maybe like a mid rounder. And then like in another draft, he was drafted 33rd. He was the first pick in the second round. Um, you can do that. No, no, no. Sorry. It'll be 31st. He was the second pick in the third, uh, uh, first pick in the second round. Um, you can do things like that. And it, it, if you keep the overalls close enough and you keep things under control, you can really have a draft that's unpredictable like that, where guys can just free fall if they wanted to, and then go really high if they wanted to. But that's all depending on how you manipulate those things. Okay. So now let's go ahead and get into the bread and butter of all of this and probably the most not probably the most important part of all of this tendencies believe it or not this is way more important than attributes way more important than uh potential anything like that this is what really kind of dictates what the player does even when they're controlled by the computer 
um, and it shows up in stats, it shows up in how they perform, it shows up everywhere. So you really want to pay attention to this one and focus. So we're going to go through this uh, pretty much uh, category by category. So tendencies jump shooting. Remember when we went into the hot zones and I set up the hot zones first to kind of show you, all right, this is where I want them to be good at. This is where you go ahead and you kind of determine how that's affected. So you can see here, step through shot. Remember, I want him to be a perimeter guy. He's not a great rebounder, at least for me, he shouldn't be. So I'm gonna make a step through shot 10 because I don't want him stepping through his shot and then kind of recovering his own boards. I want him to think that he's competent enough in his shot that it'll go in. Shot under basket, he's not gonna be shooting under the basket. Keep that low as well. Shot close, wanna keep that low. Um, and then whenever it says left, middle, right, it just wants to know the tendency, tendency of like, okay, if he does shoot close, so it's a 15%, so it, his tendency is at 15, that will shoot close. But if he does shoot close, where is he gonna shoot from? If it's to the right, that's where he'll take a shot. Um, so you wanna keep those numbers high depending on where you want him to go, but the actual shot close itself, you wanna keep low. Shot mid-range, we're going to keep that around 35. He's He can shoot mid-range, but his home is at three-point line. And again, you want to make sure that the uh, the direction of where he's shooting at reflects where he would like it from. So that's why shot mid-right is at 70, because that's his bread and butter, and that's where the hot zone is. Shot three, we're going to keep up at 65, because that's where, that's, that's where he likes to shoot, his three-point range. Shot left, 77. Shot right center, 72. Shot three right, 85, because those are the places where he's going to shoot the most from. I actually want him to make I actually want to make him a poor shooter from the center. So if he has a straight on three, that's not where he's gonna to want to take it. So I'm keeping those low, 18, 27 ish. Um, and then you can determine if he takes contested jump shots. If he doesn't like taking them, you want to keep that low. Um, like I said, he, he's okay at creating his own shot. So if he does a step back jumper, you want that up a little bit more. Not really a spin jumper to me. He will pull up in transition at maybe a little bit, so I want to keep that low, and he doesn't like to use the glass. Then we go ahead and move on to layups and dunks. Um, guy who likes to drive a little bit and make cuts to the basket, so his driving layup should be up 27. We're gonna turn down that standing layup and standing dunk a lot. He should not be getting like standing dunks very often. Uh, he shouldn't really have the ability to do that. If he is going to dunk, it's going to be when he's actually got momentum and driving to the basket. Uh, not a flashy dunker either, so we're going to keep that down. Maybe he'll do a few alley-oop plays here and there, so we can keep that up to like 11 or 10-ish. Um, not really huge on putbacks. Won't really crash the board, so we'll keep the crash at like 23. Um, I want to make him like a hop-step guy when he get, goes to the basket. That's how he'll attack. He's not like a Euro step where he like kind of gets past you. Definitely not a spin layup guy. Um, so you want to keep those a little lower, keep the hop step layup uh, high, keep the floater low too. I, I, he's not really kind of like a kind of flick of the wrist guy, um, unless he's shooting it. And you go to the drive setup here. Uh, I like to keep triple threat idle at 90 because when it's at 99, they tend to just sit there with the ball forever and not do anything. And then no setup dribble at about 92, uh, no, sorry, 90 as well. So I'm keeping it at 90 because sometimes you want them to idle so that they find a guy who will get open and um, pass the ball to them um, because you know you don't want them just like pump faking and jab stepping like all the time it'll drive you nuts um, and sometimes it's a little bit an annoying to have to look at too um, but I do want him to shoot from the triple threat so uh, if he's there in the triple threat I have the shot up the highest at 75 um, and then if he sets up I, I like I like him as a hesitation guy um, so we'll he keep the hesitation at 83. Now, when he's actually driving, how much is he driving to the basket? Um, you want to keep it somewhere in the middle for this guy. I have maybe a little less, uh, a little, little left of the middle. So you go 45 on the drive. Um, Louis drive to his right, so his strong hand, uh, 76, is where I want it at because that's where he should be going. I want to make him kind of dependent on that right hand, uh, which means that he shouldn't really be finishing with his left too much. Um, driving crossover, I'll keep it 58. A spin again I don't want him really spinning a lot so keep that low step back high half spin low crossover and everything like that um, wherever you want it to be um, the big thing to focus on here uh, when it says attack strong on the drive I'm keeping that at 68 because for me I think if uh, you know for, if a guy wants to drive and he's getting to the basket I, I'd rather him go strong than kind of go weak um, so I'm gonna actually keep that a little on the higher end for him and then the no driving dribble move. 
uh, you still want to keep that in the 90s because sometimes it just makes more sense. If you're cutting straight to the basket and you have an open lane, why are you making a crossover move to get there? Just go straight to the basket. Um, passing. This is important. Um, my general th rule of thumb for this is that your centers should be low. Your point guard should be a little higher, but it also depends on what the tendency of that player is. So if you have somebody who's like a point forward, you may want that dish to open man a little higher than like mi uh, the middle. But what you also want to pay attention to is having that dish to open man not be zero. Because what has happened for me is when that is at zero, they do not pass the ball. They don't. You want the lowest for that to be is 20. Because um, this will also uh, affect how many assists they get as well. Um, so what we want to do here with Sharif is that he's not going to be a high assist total guy. So um, keep it about 42 so that he's not dumb where it's like, okay, he's just shooting every time. If he sees a guy open, he'll pass it to him. Not a flashy pass either, but if you see somebody on the alley-oop on the break, he'll toss him the ball. Post game. He is no post game, so he's not posting up whatsoever. Um, if he does post up, I would rather go to, have him go to a shimmy, a, a shimmy shot or have to face up. Not really a back down guy or anything like that. If he's taking shots or whatever or fading, I, I'll let him have that. Freelance. This is also very important. You want to pay attention to this one too. Uh, the higher the shot, the more shots he's going to take when um he has the ball and he's just kind of like doing his own thing um you, you want to uh, for a guy like this who uh is a shooter you want him to get his touches too so you want him more in like the middle around like 55 so he's not like too commanding of the ball um but gets the ball enough roll versus pop is probably the most important thing here for freelance um when it's to closer to zero that means that he's gonna roll more often off of a pick if it's closer to 100 he's going to pop more often when he comes off of a pick so I put it at 78 because he's a shooter. I want him to, when he comes off the pick, to go ahead and pop to the outside, take his open jump shot, make it, get back on, uh, you know, get back on defense. Speaking of, this is defense. Um, I kind of want him to be smart in terms of like intercepting passes. That's fine. I don't mind that. But when it comes to actually playing on ball, he's going to be terrible. Um, so I would rather him defensively just kind of take charges as his way to play defense. Um, and he's not going to be a huge block, uh, shot blocker either. Um, he can contest shots, sure, because he has a, you know, six, seven decent length. Um, <clears throat> and that's how I'd rather have him play defense. And more times than not, he's just going to have to give up a foul, but not a hard foul. So you want to keep hard foul low, foul high for that kind of guy. And then once you've done that, you're all done with your tendencies. Um, anything that I've said is important is what you really want to key in on, but you also want to make sure that you go through every single one and make sure that he's tailored to as much as possible because that's going to affect how he actually plays and what the stats look like and how that's represented once he's actually in there. And remember, you're not going to have control of every single player. You're only going to be controlling the players that you drafted. So make sure that you spend time in the tendencies. They're the most important thing. Then after you've done that, you can go ahead and assign his badges. I went ahead and said, hey, he's a guy that, you know, when it's clutch time and, you know, he's got to, you know, make a shot, he'll give it to you. Uh, Personality-wise, a little expressive, and he keeps it real so that if you're doing my GM and you actually have to, like, deal with this guy, he's going to react to you in a certain way. Um, and the only badges that I really gave him were in terms of outside scoring. Corner specialist, pick and popper, catch and shoot. Once you've done that, you've gone ahead and you've created your guy. So there we go. We have uh, Sharif Saunders. Um, you can go ahead and create your own Sharif Saunders if you want to uh, from this tutorial. Or you can go ahead and create your own guy from the tips that I've given you. It, it's very, very important that you key in on most of the things that I've told you and to make sure that you focus on them so that you can get the prospect that you want and to make sure that they come out the way that they should um, and that they don't look as silly as the silly generated ones that 2K gives you. Hopefully this has helped. You can go ahead and create your own draft classes. Um, maybe even suggest some here if you want after you've created them. Um, if there's something else that you'd like to see me kind of focus on in uh, future sports crafts, please leave them in the comment section down below. Um, I'll see you for the next video. This went a little long, but it, it really needs this amount of time for me to explain it um, and kind of get it down to you. Like I said, probably the next sports craft, I'm gonna focus on character creation and maybe even creating sports series. Um, and yeah, and if you like it, like I said, down in the comments, let me know what you'd like to see next. Till next time, guys. Blackjack out.